Well, my thanks for staying with us, Dr. Winsor Manang, senior energy consultant and analyst joins us from Lagos. I respect uh, on the increase of the NMPC uh, petrol price, which is just an adjustment that has followed the report of a potential price hike uh, due to their withdrawal as the intermediary in the Dangote's refinery purchase deal. Thanks so much, Doctor, for joining us on the program tonight. Quickly, uh, there's a second upward adjustment by NMPC between September and now October, just barely a month, and uh, those are having a concern uh, if NMPC do not understand the situation. Rather than having Dangote refinery, uh, uh, how to uh, reduce the, the price, we are being hit again with an increase. Are we progressing or are we progressing, Doctor? Thank you very much. Um, you know, I think we are slowly allowing the market forces to take a place. Um, and I'm going to give you a bit of context. So what the NMP still has done in this case is to uh, say that they wouldn't be playing the middleman role anymore. The middleman role was the role of a monopsonist, which was simply uh, negotiate and buy the quantities for, uh, you know, required for the Dangote uh, from the a refinery for Nigerian consumption and then by so doing you can negotiate quite a, a very big price uh, you know sorry quite a very good price because you're having a large quantity and then you can pass that on to consumers but embedded in that monopsonist practice was the fact that NMPC <laughs> 133 Naira per liter for every Nigerian's consumption now, what the NMPCL has said is that we cannot absorb that anymore. Remember, they're still owing about $6.8 billion in subsidy uh, you know, loans uh, or debts to uh, different uh, suppliers. And they're saying, look, we cannot take this, on, this anymore. We want to quit that space so that other people can come into that space and, uh, and negotiate directly. What that means, in effect, is that Nigerians are going to be paying you know, whatever, you know, uh, cost it was plus the amount, the, whatever cost the product was previously, plus the amount of subsidy that the NMPCL were applying. Uh, and that means that we're going to be paying, uh, on a worst case scenario, we have, we've seen the prices change to about 1,000 plus, but that is actually, um, might, that might get better, right? The reason I say it might get better is because uh, at the moment, we haven't got any product which is midwifed as a result of the Naira, uh, crude for Naira deal yet. We haven't gotten there yet. The crude for Naira deal has only taken effect as of the early, uh, you know, I think it was day before yesterday. And so we haven't gotten to a point where we can now say that the PMS that is being sold in our stations as a result of that deal. What do I expect? That when that deal comes forward and if that deal is maintained at the volume that we're talking about, 450,000 barrels per day. If we can sustainably maintain that, it means that we would have the, uh, you know, the, the sort of fluctuations uh, that is uh, associated to Forex taken care of, would have the shipments cost, the uh, cost of uh, insurance, and the middleman cost for shipping refined products in will be taken out. So, I look at, in the long term, another fall in the price. But that is only when we begin to have PMS in our stations, which we can say this is from the crude for Naira deal. And that is contingent uh, on the crude for Naira deal actually working. Oh, oh. <laughs> Uh, all right, Doctor. Uh, thanks so much for the program. Uh, let's quickly get uh, to understand uh, these uh, issues uh, because uh, the much concern we're having also, uh, not just on our local refinery, there's also a concern of the fact that uh, there is all to be, uh, you know, the market ought to be competitive. Uh, you know, as much as uh, NMPC are trying to protect Nigerians, it so has not to uh, for the independent marketer to take advantage of uh, the Nigerian market um, on the purchase deal. Uh, align the private and individual um, uh, um, uh, independent marketers to also have a withdrawal uh, from Dangote Refinery. Uh, would you feel that uh, in a bit this will crush down uh, the price? Also, selling NMPC selling crude in Naira to Dangote, 
would it also be a sign of improvement? We are aware of their debt and all of that. All right. Thank you very much. I think, first and foremost, we need to understand how equilibrium price is established. Equilibrium price is an interaction between demand and supply. In this case, we have the supply is relatively the same. Whether it is NMPCR that is going to bid for it, or it is the supply, it is the uh, you know major off takers that are going to bid for it directly. The demand is being fixed by the Nigerian consumption. That doesn't change. What is changing is that on one hand, the NMPCL has access to what we call economies of scale, obviously because they can uh, negotiate for larger quantities and as such can get a better deal. On the other hand, we have fragments of negotiations here and there from the various off-takers. So let's separate that. The, the supply is really constant and the demand doesn't change. So nothing is going to change on the equilibrium price other than the fact that because the NMPCL has the powers, if you do not sell it as cheap as the imported option, NMPCL can go ahead and import. Because they have those powers, they can check the, the Dangote refinery prices. And because they're also buying so much, they can enjoy economies of scale. So the demand um, is not going to shift simply because uh, you know, it is now the uh, you know the sort of major suppliers that are going to offtake directly. That's not going to move the market. What I think is going to move the market would have been if we have various supply options. What happens when the supply curve shifts? Uh, uh, you know, a little bit to the left, and the demand is constant. What do you see? We then have the price will begin to drop. That is exactly what should have caused the price drop. So the price drop isn't going to be because we are changing from Robin Peter to, to Rob Paul. It's not going to change because essentially it's still robbery. What is going to change the price is if we begin to have the supply. And that brings me to the second question. The second question is saying, uh, the supply of crude to the refinery, is that going to help? Yes, of course, I've said it's going to help because it's going to cut off all of these logistics, insurance, you know, clearing costs that are associated, uh, including the cost of the, you know, the, the credit facilities for the importation, that which are also in dollars, that is going to clear off about 35% or you know, 30 to 35% of the overall cost of landing the product. And once that is passed on and the domestic refineries turn it out, the consumer should be able to benefit from that. So the imperative that the only joker in the card is the supply. The supply is very imperative. The supply, the rest is supply. Because the last thing you want is to have a situation where we start out very nice, we meet a, at least 400,000 barrels of, of crude per day on average, and then after about three weeks, we hear that the NMPCL are constrained because of either crude oil theft, because of maybe the facilities have shut down some of them, or because of the crude reserve back loans. And as such, cannot meet that again. And then we hear another headline that Dangote Refinery on a certain month, maybe in December, has gone to the US to buy crude. And when they come back, they tell you they have to refine and sell at the price. Remember, because of the conflict in the Middle East, the crude prices are going up. So you need to understand this. And that is going to take a toll if we ever have to import. So the joker in the card that we have in the pack of cards is to make sure that we can supply domestic crude to the refinery. And so we buy cut all the international logistics costs and then we can pass those cost savings on to the uh, average Nigerian without the need for any subsidy. Sorry, I can't hear. I can't hear anything. Over weeks after, where Nigerians will com continue to have an increase, should they not for once take a stand? If the landing cost is over 1,500, shouldn't that also be the case? Or does it look like government, on the other hand, are subsidizing the product? Because Nigerians seem uh, to also have a feeling that it looks like government are not are economical with the truth. Yeah, so come again. I couldn't hear most of what you said. Come Doctor, 
Uh, okay, my yeah, question, my question is about uh, the concern over if government assistance is rising this product because uh, from all indication, it looks that this is not the true landing cause. Uh, should they rather have to tell Nigerians this is a landing cause and this is what we have to sell, other than having been economical with the truth, selling at a thousand thirty nine today and tomorrow again we may be hit with a new price. Yeah, I think we need to separate two things. Uh, is the inventory that is being priced at 1,030 Naira, is that a result of the inventory that has been purely imported? Or is that a result of the inventory that is refined from the Dangote refinery and they bought the feedstock? So they did not, they did not buy the finished products. They bought the feedstock and refined it. Now, if the latter is the case, then the price seems just about right with little or no subsidy. If the former is the case, where we're expecting the landing cost to be around 1,250 Naira, uh, roughly, um, you know, then of course there's still subsidy in. But as we transit to a point where most of our consumption in country is going to come from the Dangote refinery, God willing, we then have the crude for Naira deal work we should not have subsidy at about 1,000, you know, 100 marks. We shouldn't have subsidy uh, at, at those prices. So I believe that we are in a transition phase where we are heading out of the, uh, you know, the, 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 the fully imported inventory for which it was subsidized heavily by the NMPCL. So I think we move on to the inventory from the Dangote refinery, although using imported feed stock. And the NMPCL said even at that price, they were still subsidizing at 133 Naira per litre. Now I think we're moving on to a point where we're selling it with little or no subsidy. And we will now get to a point where the proof for Naira deal kicks in in effect, saves us some of that uh, money that I talked about, the logistics and the insurance and all of that. And then we could even have either a net price position or even a decrease depending on the level of savings vessels, how much subsidy is. Remember in all of this that um, it's all contingent on the crude for Naira deal being uh, implemented exactly as it ought to be implemented. Uh, doctor, now in all of these, we are bothered about the uh, the purchasing power of Nigeria because when you look at the economic situation now, uh, yes, there is an increase about the product, but Nigerians sometimes are finding it very difficult to afford the product. How do we begin to manage all of this on the scoring the already existing economic hardship uh, for for a good number of times now in the country when Nigerians are still having an outcry? Uh, what do you feel that government can do to hasten up process where uh, it will not really be biting hard on Nigerians? Uh, they promise CNG bosses, Nigerians are still asking questions because we are afraid that people will lose their jobs and this will also get more untold hardship on Nigerians on these uh, recent events. Thank you very much. I think uh, you've hit the nail right there. And that I'm going to answer by saying we need to go back to the drawing board on what actually classes as the tenets of energy security. So we have energy affordability, energy accessibility, and energy availability. Now, we have to now begin to look at the sermon of energy transition, not just from a nice to say uh, avenue, but from a must-have avenue where we have must-have options. So it's essentially, what is the next big thing? The next big thing is gas. Remember, a CNG car, in liters equivalent is going to use maybe about 230 naira per liter of equivalence of gas versus the liter of fuel to achieve the same energy output you would have to pay 1030 naira for fuel pms but it's 230 naira for um cng but for you to affordability has been solved right but what about accessibility and availability this is where the government will come in the CNG stations that we talked about for even private people, we need to start building it. We need to start even rolling out the CNG buses themselves. We need to start giving people options already. Let me say this. The CNG needs a lot of infrastructure, and that is one of the biggest impedances to the private people getting on board the CNG program. If you then look at energy uh, transition, when it comes to output, a lot of households are using inverter. A lot of them are using solar panels. That means they're already operationalizing energy transition. So we need to get to a point 
where the government gives us the imperatives to support energy transition with CNG vehicles, where they give us you know, uh, you know the, the, that support because there's a lot of gas everywhere, and there's there's need for uh, the government to do this as quickly as possible and make sure that we have options. Essentially, the most important thing that people need to start thinking about is begin to think energy transition, begin to think moving to CNG for those that can afford it, begin to think the government should begin to think about, I mean, some of those funds that they are doing with N NCDMB, local contents, we can pick some of those funds, the 1% that is used for, 1% uh, of the operating expenses of oil and gas companies that is put towards the NCDMB fund could be increased to like 1.5%. And the 5% is used to set up CNG energy options for in different states. We can do that. We can begin to use the build, operate, and transfer model, allow investors to come in, build the facility, operate it for a period of 15 to 20 years or 25 years, make back their money, and then hand it over to the to the to the uh you know wh whoever is going to be the operator of the government there are a number of models but i think this is where we place the icing on the cake to make sure that we play around and in improve the prospects of energy accessibility and energy availability when it comes to the other alternate energy options essentially we should have a situation where people can choose whatever energy they want to consume or whatever is cheaper for them. And that should be what the conversation should be at the moment. And that's exactly what the government should be putting their energy uh, towards uh, improving. Assembled by the government, uh, yeah, recent move on unveiling fuel CNG conversion portal uh, in a bid to also have some Nigerians having to vehicle owners to convert uh, that's for vehicle owners who continue to have a concern on if Nigerians really understand what is a proper engagement, a proper uh, sensitization uh, among the Nigerian people with the federal government underscoring the importance of this energy. We've seen how much Nigerian currently is tracking towards the climate change and there's a need for this sensitization, there's a need for this awareness. Uh, do you feel that more should be done in terms of sensitization and if we can begin to have Nigerians understand that there's a need to transit from where we are uh, to that reality? And also, what is your assessment about government walking the talk? Because it's not just about fantastic initiative, it's about what are they currently doing? Are they leading by example? Are they what is on ground that should really something to share how this can go? The way to go as we wrap up, please. All right, thank you. I think you, you've said it all. Government needs to walk the talk. I mean, you obviously want energy transition, but we should be issuing out cards to government officials uh, that have the CNG options. We should obviously be changing our mass transit options to CNG, and, and that essentially um, should, again, cascade the prices. Because if I go, for example, I'll give you context, if I go uh, to the Lagos metro buses, and I feel that uh, the non-CNG options are perhaps maybe 500 naira for the trip, and the CNG options are about 200 naira. That alone will make people want to feel that, okay, this CNG is real. This, sometimes it could just be that um, that's, that's a way to drive the narrative. I, abroad, you find out that there are options. For example, if there's a heavy traffic, um, you know, you see one road, they say this is the normal road, uh, but this side has, uh, is a fast lane. There's obviously no uh, traffic, and then you could take that path. So people need to have those options. So the government needs to walk the talk. What are other countries doing? When it comes to energy transition, for example, other countries are giving things like they're giving support in terms of knowledge transfer. They're setting up technological hubs to drive that case. They're also opening up the market because the market is not going to open up just because we've set up a CNG uh, factory. The market should essentially be government. Government should say, we've opened up, uh, you know, we've, we've given uh, any investor access. If you set up a CNG plant, you can convert all our vehicles. We have about 2,000 vehicles. You can go ahead and convert it. That investor knows that they don't need to look for private people. They can start with the government. So the government should use their cars or the cars of their uh, appointed officers to begin to create the market for anyone. And then uh, government will walk that talk and then the private people will see at the advantage and then would follow suits. A very big thanks to Dr. Wizard and Sino Energy Analyst and Cosalt. And thanks so much for sparing some of your time uh, this evening with us on the program. Thank you. Do enjoy your evening.
All right, everyone, we continue to have a concern on how this can go. The recent increase by NMPC Hall and the fact that many Nigerians are still knocking on them in respect to the price, on how the economic hardship is not in any way going, I mean, in any way getting better. And I just have still having a concern on what government should do. And that is an expert and consultant given an insight and what the way we should continue to have engagement with. There is a need to have other things away from of the normal vehicles and fuel powered vehicles that we have in the country so has to continue uh, to have this reduction of the hardship among nigerians that's the size of a program tonight on big talk we'll continue to have a concern in other developments nationally as we'll have a conversation again tomorrow sometime on the station do stay with us my name is edikan michael i'm your host see you tomorrow <music>